welcome to Your Health in Your Hands. I'm Dr. David Ajibade with the Brain and Body Foundation. I hope you are staying safe and healthy. Now, we have a very special guest on tonight, but before we get into that, I want to say a few, a few things about Nigeria and Nigerians. We, for example, stand out in several different areas, good as well as bad. The good, we have the richest black man in the, on the planet. Of course, we have several rich billionaires from Nigeria. I mean, whether you, like, you may call it good or bad, I don't know. It depends on you. Where our athletes are among the most accomplished, our soccer players are among the most accomplished musicians, and so on and so forth. In the bad, especially when it comes to health, we tend to not to do so well. We are amongst the worst lifespans and life expectancies in the world. In fact, in Africa, where we're supposed to be the lion of Africa, we are number three when it comes to lifespan and health. Out of 54, we are, sorry, we are we're third from the bottom, not just not third from the top, we're third from the bottom. In addition, we have the worst, amongst the worst maternal and child mobilities, uh, maternal mortality, maternal deaths at the time of birth of, of the children, just behind India. India is the only one that surpasses us. So in many regards, we're not doing too well. However, there is one area in which we have absolutely no equal where we stand out, where we have no peer, and that is in the area of sickle cell disease. Now, this being the week of and the day of sickle cell, the World Sickle Cell Day, I thought it was, it was fitting for us to look at this and face it head on, because not only are we number one in the world, we have over 4 million people with sickle cell disease, not only are we, do we have the highest proportion we also have the most severe cases. Now, India is a close second or third, uh, but they don't have as severe cases as we do. And our guest today is going to expound on that a little bit more. And speaking about guests, without much further ado, I want to welcome Professor Adeinka Balusi. Thank you very much. Hello, Ma. Thank you so much for making it today. And uh, you and I have had several discussions on this topic. You are absolutely passionate about this and you've given a, a good proportion of your life and your career to, to addressing this. But let me not say much more about that. I want to hear from you and our audience wants to hear from you, your story, your journey, and just tell us a little bit about you. As we say in Nigeria, may we meet you, Ma. Thank you very much. I'm pleased and uh, opportuned to be on this program. Uh, I'm also happy that I'm speaking with a colleague who understands me and is going to be even more uh, passionate to, you know, commute, commute, co communicate with his team on this topic because we are both working for the good of the patients. At the same time, we are both working to reduce the burden of sickle cell disease in Nigeria. It is my own pleasure that the last 40 years I have committed to this work, mm. albeit theoretically at the start, because I'm a bench person. I'm a bench to bedside uh, professor of hematology. Mm. I don't think we should be in the closet doing laboratory work without translating it. Translational research is my passion. That is, we go from the theory of what we know, of what we found out, our discoveries, and take this into actual fact with looking at the human and how they materialize and how they relate to what we have found on the bench. Mm -hmm. So in the last 40 years, I have done a lot of research uh, I have imparted going to community, and that is where I am now. As a retired professor of hematology, I have uh, been fortunate to have been able to meet with those who are really affected by the disease while I did the lab work. And after retirement, I said to myself, don't just go and sit down there and say, oh, yes, I've got all the accolades, I've got all the awards, why don't I enjoy, enjoy? I decided that before I left the bench, I was already communicating with the public. 
with the patients. They call themselves warriors. I'm in tune with them. And we talk. In fact, they call me like we are in the same family. They are mm -hmm. members of my family because these are Nigerians who deserve a lot from us all. Any of us can contribute to their lives. And that is what I signify. Wow, that's, that's absolutely amazing, man. But let, let me ask you this for the sake of our viewers. What does being a professor of hematology actually mean? And why of all the different fields in hematology, why did you choose to zone in on sickle cell disease? So two questions. Thank you very much. Um, a professor of hematology, it means you are deep, 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 deep in the study of the blood. Because mm. you know that the blood is, is the, is, it, it, the blood is the thing that holds us alive. It, it has, you know, like in the secondary school, they'll ask you, what are the functions of the blood? I don't want to do that now. The blood holds from every part of your body, from your brain to your toes, from your knees, from every part of your body, it runs and gives you all the nourishment. It also takes all the expired products out. Mm -hmm. And when anything happens that you cannot do any of those functions, then there's trouble. Mm -hmm. There's trouble everywhere. And that's what is happening. It is a blood disorder. And in, in my choice, I don't know how I got that choice, I was a lab person before I got into hematology. I studied chemistry at the University of Ibadan. And in chemistry, it is analytical. It is, you know, you want to find out, you want to find out a lot. And so when I crossed over to hematology, I took over the aspect of analytical, that is looking at the blood, not as medical doctors examining them, Looking at the blood, what does it contain? What is, what is a good type of blood to have? How, how does that make you a, a, a normal, healthy person? So that is my vocation. And that is interesting because you can find out a lot. I'm very curious, inquisitive. I love to find out new things. And when I chose that area, it has been an explosion of knowledge for me. So I've enjoyed it, even up until returning, I was getting awards. And right now I'm getting another award this coming, this month, this month, you know, because really? there's that, much that. to do. There's so much to do, so much to find out every day about this blood and what you can do to help people who have this abnormal blood to do better. There are things we can do and there are things we cannot do or you know all this, and then you charge the public, you charge the patients and tell them, these are things you can control. These are things you cannot control. So let us do something about it. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take a short break now, folks, and we will be right back. Welcome back. So I'm here with Professor Falusi, who we're talking about, who's a professor of hematology, and we're talking about sickle cell disease in Nigeria. So, Prof, let's talk about sickle cell disease in Nigeria. How bad is it really? And uh, are, we, are we really handling this like we should? Okay. Thank you very much. I think I, we need to project the fact that you made a statement that we are the, we are the worst in the whole world as mm. far as sickle cell disease is concerned. We are number one carrying yeah. this burden, heavy burden in debt. And we're not expecting Nigeria to leave everything to its government to do that because it's, it's a myriad of problems for these people. So you cannot just say, oh, it's the government, it's the government. It's not the government alone. Each of us has a role to play. We Nigerians are about 20% of all the Black um, Black Africans in the world. Mm. And because of our share population, just for share population that we have, that is exploding in every day. And like it's been projected that by 2050, we will have the largest, more, in fact, much double, almost double what we have right now. Of if wow. we do anything about it. And mm. right now we're just scratching the back of the ball. We need to put into place an organized 
strategic way in which we can, uh, we can address this disease. It's not enough to say, oh, America, there is bone marrow transplantation. And then we, we, we are all running after that. That is true. But even in America, how many people have been ha having bone marrow transplantation? It's not easy to come by. We're talking about maybe two people in a million who've been seen in Nigeria on bone marrow transplantation if they can afford it. They have to travel out. And then if they can afford it, only the de novo rich, let me tell you, only the de novo rich can mm. do both. A few Nigerians are already doing it abroad. But you have to be abroad, number one, because the conditions, they are not even, you know, what it is. Although Lagos is going to start doing that now, we are thinking, you know, a lot is coming. But how many people can afford that? So moving from that part, we have to move to a place where millions can be affected. Millions can change the strategy. We all can face this, speak to it, and act to it. We need to be the face and the voice of this awareness. Because when a disease originates from the family, it is not something that is contagious. You can't catch it by sleeping in my house. No, you can only get it from your parents. Mm -hmm. And if we are the parents, we need to do something about this. We are upcoming parents. The youths are parents of tomorrow. So they have to take this bull by the horn and see what they can do about it. We are not going to be talking about one or two in a million. We're going to be talking about all the homes in Nigeria, all the families doing something that is going to work against sickle cell disease. That is the essence of what we are preaching. And you know that in Nigeria, we have 80% of the population itself are not really educated. 80%? They live in the rural areas. Did you say 80%? Yeah. And like... In the, about four years ago, we went to all the villages in your states. We, we, we were commissioned by the NYC. We had a day each in Ido, local government. They divided into senatorial areas, you know, and then we visited each, the um, local government headquarters of each of those senatorial areas. And each day we went there with our team. It's like you are telling them a story you've never had. It's a pity. The Timmy masses, they were sitting there. In fact, if you go to our archives on, on Sickle Cell Per Life Foundation, you will see they sat down there waiting to hear from us because it's like we are, we are telling them something they, they had no clue about. Hmm. So I think leaving those people and just trying to say we can do bone marrow, we can do, yes, we can, but that's not going to touch any, it's not going to touch 0.001% of the population. We want to do something that's going to the masses. We want to do something that we can go to the NYC and send NYC, train them, and send them to the field to go into the nooks and corners of Nigeria. Speak in Hausa, speak in Yoruba, speak in Igbo, speak in all the dialects, and educate our people. People are ready to listen, but who is educating them? Nobody. We're just leaving them there. And then when we come to NTA, how many of them can even see NTA? We, we have problems. And until we go to the root of our problems, we are not addressing it. The government of Nigeria has the arm to address this, not even by spending much money. Because I was profiling the solution some years ago, and I actually approached the NYC. NYC will be the, will be the channel to reach the masses in the villages where they are posted. We can train them annually that they will go like messengers for us. And that would work because then they can reach the woman who has the baby and tell her what to do with this baby. They can reach the clinics and tell them how to take care of these people as they come in. I think until we go to that down route and see what we can do to help the masses, we're not there. The preventive approach is the in thing. What is difficult to convince people because they are used to doing one thing somehow, some way, until you are able to speak to them educationally, encourage them in their own language, 
Tell them what they can do that doesn't cost them so much money. And then they don't have to go to hospital to do it. We can train them even in the field in front of their homes. We, they can, the children can be trained in the schools with a Know Your Genotype something program. The children will learn this from the youth. So by the time, it's not when they are getting married. Don't talk to youth when they are getting married. It's too late. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to them from primary school. There's a way to speak to people in their language. Mm -hmm. Let them understand that this thing is so important to their lives for them to live well in future. Because even those of us who don't have this disease, you know what we go through to live in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Where the light goes off, the water is not there. People will go and draw a bucket of water to take care of themselves for a whole day. And how many, how, how, how can they take care of their health under that condition? So you don't want to superimpose another disease that is going to demand so much from you. It demands, it disease demands from you from when you are born till you die. Once you have it, you can have all the medical care, but you will still be going to hospital to take care of that or spending so much money. So we need to curb this from the youth. Let the youths know what they are getting into. We are not going to say, oh, you don't marry somebody. I'm not for that. I will counsel you. You do your own thinking and you take your own decision. It is called informed decision. Yeah, and right. the parents can help themselves. When you get married, you explain to yourselves and you know what you want for yourself. Your family is the one that bears this burden when this child is born. That's right. So this is That's the way we are going. We, so the preventive is the area to go. Sorry, Prof, we have to take a short break here and uh, we'll, be, we'll be right back to continue that discussion. Thank you. Uh, stay tuned, folks. Bye. Welcome back. All right. We're talking about the challenges of prevention. Now, just to give you a scope, Nigeria, like we said, has over 4 million people with sickle cell disease or sickle cell disorder. disorder. Now, the, the, there's a huge pool of people feeding that 4 million people, that 4 million pill. There are over 40 million people who have the sickle cell traits. And any two of them get together, the chance <laughs> of having a child with sickle cell disease is like, what? 25%. So that's a big problem. And then if you now add to the fact that many of these tests that are being done tend to give what is known as false negatives. In other words, the person is, that goes and he, uh, he's actually AS, but the test says he's AA or she's AA. And so he's, he's, he feels like he is safe and they get married to someone who is also AS and boom, you have a problem. <laughs> and everybody's exactly. Everybody's blaming everybody else that, oh, that, is this really my child? It's not my child, of course. Husband's saying it's not my child. And the wife goes back and forth. And then before you know, yeah. there's strain and there's stress in the family. So, Ma, this is a big problem. Yes. How are we going to, I mean, this whole, because if you can't get it right, yeah, just continue to feed, going to feed that population of people with sickle cell disease. How do we, how do we address this? Thank you very much. This is not something that's new to me, this question you are asking me. It's very obvious because there are mistakes that are being made. First of all, some of our people, they get things wrong. They go to the wrong places. And then they, 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 some people are told that they are blood group. People don't know the difference between blood group and blood genotype. There is a world of difference. The, the blood group, it's what we should teach our children in secondary schools. The blood group is different. The blood group is telling you about the surface of the red cells. What are the antigens and things that are coating the red cells? And when you do that, you do the blood group. And you say somebody is A in blood group. They go away, they tell you they are A in genotype. We have seen educated people. They don't take note of that. They just hear this A and they start running. We knew somebody in a technologist in hematology, I mean, in UCH, his wife was also a technologist and they got this wrong. Their three boys were SS. Mm. All the three boys they had were SS mm. because he got it wrong. How could a technologist not know his own genotype? Mm. So like we didn't know whether I was telling the wife a lie. And then there's something in Nigeria, there's a lot of deceit. You want to marry this rich girl from this home. 
These boys will not go back for the test. He says, let's go together. He said, no, I, in my family, we don't have anything. I don't want to go to do any test. There's something wrong with me. And the man refuses to go. And he already has his A somewhere. And he says, I'm AA. I'm marrying you. They go and marry. These are another problem. It's happening. I'm telling you. And then the last one is the laboratory problem, which we are aware of. Because I've been on the bench for 40 years, I can tell you. The cellulose acetate is not a hallmark for determination of genotype. What we need to go cellulose acetate electrophore. That that's, that that's, that's what people use. Okay. Yes. That's what we pay 500, 500 naira. 500 naira to do. Yes. Right. You, you put a strip of cellulose acetate paper and then you put the blood. Sometimes, if you wash the blood very well before you lice it, that is, before you break it down, you may be able to get cleaner bands. It's looking at bands. You may be able to get cleaner. But many laboratories don't do that. They just prick the finger, they, they take the blood into the tube, and then they lice everything together. So both the stroma, that is the cover of the cell, and the blood inside it is all together. And then when they run it, the bands don't come clear, and they make mistakes. And then besides that, there are some bands that look like another because their composition is a bit similar. So if you don't have a good discriminant in the lab to separate that very well, you may get the result wrong. So all these mistakes have been discovered in the lab. And that is why a new technique is being introduced. A new uh, point of care test is now in vogue. It's being used now and it's been introduced to Nigeria. Some tests we are doing in Abuja, we've been using it in our own lab. In fact, I've taken it to Ekiti already. In the last one year, I've introduced it in Ekiti. Fantastic. And that's what we are going to be doing on June 19, June 17 here in Ibadan. Because we know that we can do this anywhere now. We don't have to carry everybody's blood and line it up and take it to the laboratory in UCH. We can do it right there and give you a result. It's called a point of care test. We take each person's own, we do it individually there and it's simple from the strip to the what to the, the liquid to be used and we can do the diagnosis immediately and we can give you the result immediately. So you don't have to go and mix it with another person's sample and realign wrongly or something like that. So this point of care test is very easy to come by. We buy it. We too buy it. So I don't want anybody saying 2005 is too much for them to buy it. I pay that. And I do it for free. But how many Nigerians can I do for free? Exactly. I'm not so in This is where the government needs to come in, the state exactly. government. The yes. It, it, but it's not even only government. I must say, we couldn't be. The government has too many things to do. We ourselves have to be responsible for our health. Anywhere in the world, you don't stand back and say, government, government, government. 2005 is not above most people. They would rather buy a show be with their 2005. And Kara is 2005. But if they say, do this test for all your children and get it right, I don't think we should be grumbling and complaining to government. Because government is not going to be with you in the night when your child is sick. You pay the 2005. Let them go to where we are doing this correctly. Get it done once and for all and keep it. And that will help in your decision in the future. You don't repeat it many times if you do it right. And you can come to Sikul Cell Hope Life Foundation in, in, in Lubadon Estate or in UCH. We are having collaboration with UCH. You, you can get there, ask for Sikul Cell Hope Life Foundation. We'll do it for you all within a few minutes and you get your result individually. And there will be no mistakes. There is also another test that is called HPLC. It's more sophisticated. The doctors refer people to us to do it. It's 6,005 per test. That is the gold standard where it's confirmation that when you do the POCT, you can also come and thank your blood for that one. And then we will do it. The machine will put all the, the, the haplotype, that is all the different blood portions. You will see it yourself in a graph. And then there can be no mistake. That's the gold standard. But we can't do that for everybody because it's very expensive. But the point of that test, I'm telling you, it's about 95%. It's 99% correct. The paper has... You can't do that for everybody. And besides, yeah, just in the battle. Exactly. <laughs> there are people all over the world that, that need it. So... Yes, we can take it. We can, we can have partnership with even village 
places. If we train the, the nurses in the place, they can do POCT. Very, a very simple method. It doesn't require any special technique. You just train them and there is no equipment, no special equipment. It's just the kit and water. The kit and water. That's, that's Pure really water. Good. The ordinary that's, water. That's really good news. But at this point, we're going to have to wrap it up, Mark. And um, just to let our viewers know that this is not the last time you're going to see Prof. <laughs> She's going to be back. And We're going to continue talking. Continue our discussion. But at this point, we do, we do have to shut, up, cut, shut it down at this point. As for now, we have to end this now. Please join us on Saturday for the conclusion of this talk. God bless. Stay tuned. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Be strong. Bye.